Welcome to the Zoom Bible study. This is the eighth lesson in our study on the Gospel of John, a gospel of light and glory, and one that beautifully reveals Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. If you've missed any of the previous lessons and want to catch up, all of them are on the church's YouTube channel at SOTC Huntsville. For the past two weeks, the lessons have been longer than usual, so in the discussions that take place after the recording ends, I promised that I would try to keep it short this week. Let's see how well I keep my word. Last week, we discussed the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Tonight, we take a look at the follow-up event, the evening Mary, Lazarus' sister, anointed Jesus with her hair. And for that, we go to John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Now, just pause and think of just how amazing that one sentence is. The home of Lazarus, who he had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the, whom, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold? It could have brought nearly a year's wages and the money had given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You have poor people with you always, but you won't always have me. As with any story about Jesus, there are layers upon layers of insight. Depending how one approaches a story, there are tons of perspectives to consider. But for this lesson tonight, here are some big picture takeaways for us to consider. The first, location matters. The Gospel of John likes geographical indicators. As Amy Jill writes in her book, The Gospel of John, A Beginner's Guide to the Way, the Truth, and the Life, she writes, Just as wind or water, taste or scent or touch can hold traces of the sacred, so can locations, whether mentioned in the Gospel or experienced in our lives. End of quote. The story takes place in Bethany and at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And Amy Jill makes a pretty big deal about how places in our lives can have a sense of sacredness to them. Certainly in the Bible as a whole, it makes a big deal about places. And we know this to be true in our own lives. I remember the place of my baptism. I even remember the song that was sung after I was baptized. I remember the place where I preached my first sermon. I know the exact spot where I was ordained. And after thinking my ministry was over because I was gay, I remember the place where I baptized someone for the first time as an out gay Christian minister. And on top of all of that, the places of my childhood and youth to this day are sacred to me because of the memories they hold. All of us 
have places in our lives that for one reason or another are significant and sacred for us. The point is that every place can be sacred. Wherever we go, wherever we are at, we are given opportunities to do good and serve the Lord and others. In his book on the book of Jeremiah, Run with the Horses, The Quest for Life at Its Best, Eugene Peterson writes about Judah's unhelpful whining about being in Babylon, and he writes this. Build houses and make yourselves at home. You are not camping. This is your home. Make yourself at home. This may not be your favorite place, but it is a place. Dig foundations, construct a, ha a habitation, develop the best environment for living that you can. If all you do is sit around and pine for the time you get back to Jerusalem, your present lives will be squalid and empty. Your life right now is every bit as valuable as it was when you were in Jerusalem and every bit as valuable as it will be when you get back to Jerusalem. And here's the quote I'm after. The only place you have to be human is where you are right now. The only opportunity you will ever have to live by faith is in the circumstances you are provided this very day. This house you live in, this family you find yourself in, this job you have been given, the weather conditions that prevail at this moment. Folks, location matters, including wherever we find ourselves at any given moment. Every place is an opportunity to do good. Every place is a place to serve the Lord and one another. Thus, every place can become sacred. And along the same lines is our second takeaway, presence matters. For this, I'll just quote Amy Jill. Lazarus is at a table with Jesus. At some point, I do think Martha and Mary join him as well, as for whether Lazarus also served, he does even if he is not on his feet. His very presence serves Jesus because his return from the grave testifies to Jesus as the resurrection and the life. Sometimes who we are and what we have experienced can be as important as what we do. That presence also assures readers that just as Jesus can call Lazarus from the tomb, so God can do the same for Jesus. Lazarus's last action in the narrative is to sit at table with Jesus, which strikes me as a great conclusion. Yet it is not the one that will prevail. Following the dinner in John 12, 9, a great crowd of the Jews came to Bethany, not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, who he raised from the dead. Again, John offers a come and see moment with eyes trained not only on Jesus, but also on Lazarus, whose body testifies to what Jesus can do. Wherever we are, whatever the location may be, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So let's give witness to Jesus and to the values of the kingdom of God wherever we are, because location matters and presence matters. And now let's get to Mary's action. It was an act of sheer love and gratitude for Jesus, and it was extravagant. Now, Judas makes sure we know that the perfume was worth nearly a year's wages. I played around with this, and if this took place in Alabama today, that perfume would have cost around $60,600. 
That's the average median income in Alabama last year. Can you imagine breaking a bottle of a $60,000 perfume and pouring it all out on feet? Listen, in a world in which statements of love are often, often end up being nothing but empty words, Mary backed up all of her words of love and devotion with action. Mary's actions were acts of worship and discipleship. Beautiful. And they were also prophetic. By using the expensive perfume to anoint Jesus' body for his impending death and burial, Mary shows that she understands what type of Messiah Jesus really was. And she showed full commitment to that mission. Now, does this mean that to be a disciple of Jesus, that we need to break a bottle, a $60,000 bottle of perfume and, and break it on the altar or something like that? Of course not. But it does mean that we are to do what we can in service and in gratitude to Christ our Lord. And finally, a word about fragrance and the sense of smell. Amy Jill points out that the fragrance of the perfume in John 12 is mentioned as a contrast to the stink of the grave in John 11. When the fragrance of that expensive perfume filled that house, when the fragrance of Christ filled that house, when the fragrance of worship and gratitude and discipleship filled that house, it overcame whatever the lingering effects of Lazarus's grave might have been. And here's something else that's interesting. When Mary wiped the perfume on Jesus's feet with her hair, the same sweet fragrance that was on Jesus was now on her. And from that moment forward, Mary carried the fragrance of Jesus into the world. And isn't that what we are to do as well? To carry the fragrance of love, to carry the fragrance of joy, to carry the fragrance of hope, to carry the fragrance of peace, to carry the fragrance of justice-making into the world. That's what we're called to do. So to summarize the takeaways, location matters, presence matters. And wherever we are and with whatever we have, we are to do what we can to carry the fragrance of Jesus into the world. Until next week, God's abundant grace and peace to you.